The day is finally here. We're gonna put this thing back together. I can't believe it myself. Just some last bit of prep first. the head surface of the block and I'm going to use a razor blade to do that. Now I am using a metal razor blade and you might want to use a plastic one. There's less chance that you're going to put any deep scratches or gouges but this is an iron block and it's old and it's been through a lot of heat cycles so I'm not really super worried about it. I'm just trying to get the old gasket remnants off of the block so that's what I'm doing here. Once I get all the gasket remnants off the block, I'm using carb cleaner and a scotch bright, and I'm just roughing this surface up just a little bit, making it shine up and look nice and clean. You kind of want your block to head surface to be as clean as possible. So I spent a lot of time doing this, but you are going to have staining that's on your head surface. There's really nothing that you can do about it unless you want to spend a ridiculously enormous amount of time. And for something like this that is this old and doesn't have the kind of tolerances of a new engine, it's probably not worth the effort to really spit shine this and make it just clean as a whistle. So we get it pretty good. Then what I'm doing here is I'm spraying some WD-40 down into these tubes and we are wire brushing them out to make sure that they're all clean and flowing. Then we turn the block over and make sure that we empty everything out. Okay, so we're gonna attempt to hone the block with this. Um, and we'll see, I've never done this before. Watched a couple YouTube videos. We're gonna see how this goes. Wish me luck. Generally speaking, the way that you wanna hone this is on a relatively low speed on your drill, up and down five or six times. You don't wanna jerk it out at the end. You kinda of wanna just take it out so that you're not scoring the top end of the cylinder. You can see that I did it wrong on the first cylinder, but we go a little harder and a little longer on all the rest. And then of course I come back to the first cylinder again. Once again, I am not an expert. Everything that I'm doing here from the honing process I learned watching other videos of people that are a lot better or smarter than I am at doing any of this. So I did it as best as I could based on the instruction that I had. So I would recommend that if you're planning to do something like this for your engine, you can see how I did it. But I would also recommend watching one of the experts videos showing you how to do this. Well, that didn't go as bad as I expected it to. Is it the perfect hone ever? 
Probably not, but it's not bad and it's gonna do the job. Now let's put the bottom end together. Needless to say, I've never done this before. We got all the caps off. We're gonna put new bearings in, but first we have to take the old ones out. To take the old bearings out, you can kind of just rotate them side to side and they pop right out. And you kind of put the new ones in the exact same way. The tension at the top of the bearing kind of holds them in place and you just kind of pop them in. They snap in, it's really kind of satisfying. You wanna make sure that all of the surfaces are completely clean after you take the old bearings out before you put in the new bearings and you're going to use assembly lube on each bearing after you put it in. Now the assembly lube is just to make sure that the first time you start everything up, it's fully lubricated and you don't damage anything. After the first start, the engine lube burns off or goes away, and of course you have the engine oil that takes its place. You really can't go wrong by lubing these up, even if it seems like too much. Once everything is totally lubed up, I place the crank in there on those lubed up bearings. And then we're going to lube the other half of the bearings again using that same assembly lube. Then we're going to put the bearings into the top caps and fully lube them up before we place them on. Now once we have all of our caps placed on, we're going to gently tap them down with a hammer and a wooden block to seat them onto the bearings. And that just seats these caps on there. Now when you're tapping these down, you notice that I put the screws in each one and then tap them down. And that's just to make sure that they get tapped down with the proper alignment. And after every one that you see, you want to go ahead and turn the crank just to make sure that everything turns the way it's supposed to and nothing is binding. Then I take the screws out and move on to the next ones. Now it's time to torque these down. So the first thing I do is go around and put all the bolts in, make sure that the oil pickup stuff is all set in place, and just hand tighten them down. Now before we put the bolts in here for the crank caps, we do soak them in oil, just to make sure they are plenty lubed, but you don't want to get too much on there. You certainly don't want it to rest down at the bottom of the bolt hole and hydro lock these and break them off.
last, we're gonna torque these bolts down. And there is a specific torque sequence for the crank caps. You're going to have to check with your manufacturer to determine exactly what that is. You might have heard at the end of that clip a little bit of a snap, and that was not the torque wrench clicking. Unfortunately, that was this bolt breaking. <laughs> and it's all my fault. I've mentioned before, I'm not a full-time mechanic, and I'm a dumbass, so I make mistakes. In this case, the torque specifications are 60 Newton meters. Unfortunately, my torque wrench is in foot-pounds, so 60 foot-pounds is a lot more than 60 Newton meters. <laughs> and so I messed up and torqued the bolt too tight and broke it off in the block. Let me show you what we're talking about here. So right here is the bolt that's good. And right here is the bolt that's bad. And unfortunately, it didn't have the common decency to break above the plane. So as you can see, it's down in there. So here's what we're gonna do. We have this right here. Now this is a hinge drill bit. So this will go inside there, but it will also not damage the threads. So I can drill into the bolt head, which is fully oiled and should come out fairly easy and back it out. Now the other precaution that we're also taking is we're going to use a left-handed screw. And a left-handed screw will screw the proper way to turn the bolt out. So we should be able to take the bolt out with just this and protect the threads in that hole. Success. Now we're going to use the proper torque and we'll torque it down exactly how we're supposed to. Now you do want to take time while you're doing the torquing to make sure that you turn the crank so that you know nothing is binding and it's turning freely like it's supposed to. This whole sequence takes some time and you want to follow the procedure but it's not difficult to do. Anyone can do this and the instructions generally for all the torque patterns and everything else you're going to be able to find online somewhere for the engine that you're trying to put back together. Well, now we have a fully installed crank. It's a lot easier than you would think. Our minds make this stuff super complicated, but in reality, it's just not that hard. Take your time, pay attention to what you're doing, and you can do just about anything. Now, the honing tool I borrowed from my brother, and the bearings weren't all that expensive. I kind of got off cheap this week, but we've already spent well more than this car's worth. Why? Well, it's for the love of cars. This one's not to sell, this is for me to drive. And if this moron can do this sort of job, you can surely grab the car that you always wanted and do it too. I'll see you in the next one.